<laughs> I got distracted answering emails and forgot to te uh, to make sure that the uh, stream was ready to go. Um, hello. <laughs> it's been such a weird morning. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I actually forgot. Uh, one sec. We're going to have to pop over here. Hello. Grab this. Okay, there we go. Uh, pop that in. There we go. Uh, da, da, da. And... Whew! Uh, what are you? Go away, you. I don't know what you are. Hello, Lobsoul, Robin, Daniel, Alice. Thanks for joining us. We are back with Scum Villains Self-Saving System, uh, which ended on a really horrible note last uh, time we read. Uh, sorry about the weird little start here. I was in the middle of trying to fix a couple things and uh, did not remember to set up the stream properly. <laughs> it's been such a morning. Uh, we are on chapter 28 of Scum Villain. Last time, we finally reached the big climax that Shen Qingchu was so afraid of this whole time, where he has to betray his beloved Luo Binghe and push him into the abyss. It was very sad. He's very distraught about it. And uh, now he's having to move forward with his life and figure out what's next in the book, because now we're kind of going off, uh, off of uh, the track here, because things are going to really start changing with the story. Uh, hello, um, amen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so let's get started with chapter 28, Friends from the Same Hometown. This year's Immortal Alliance Conference was one with the most disastrous losses since its inception. The new talent from each sect participating in the conference numbered around a thousand. The Zaohua Temple members who'd focused on acting as the pillars of the barrier spell had been luckily spared, while Huan Hua Palace suffered the most damage, losing nearly a hundred people. Kang Chong Mountain suffered the least, only thirty or so had suffered harm. As for the other assorted sects and clans, the newcomers with low skill and meager cultivation were mostly concentrated in this group. This was the group that had truly been hit the hardest by casualties. Getting your name on the gold-inscribed tablet should have been a joyous occasion, but looking at it now, many of the people on the tablet had perished in Judy Gorge, especially the first-ranked name high at the top of the list, a member of Kang Chong Mountain's Ching Jing Peak. Shen Qingchu's beloved disciple, Luo Binghe, deceased and his sword broken. Truly heartbreaking news. And this was not even counting the casualties among cultivators who'd entered the scene to give aid after the incident. With this battle, each sect could be said to have suffered major losses. A red ranking chart was delivered to Ching Jing Peak. On the ranking chart, the first place Luo Binghe was high at the top, glittering in gold. Ming Fan walked in and reported, Shizun, ten thousand spirit stones were delivered. What should be done with them? Ten thousand spirit stones? Shen Qingchu stared blankly. Why would they suddenly send so many spirit stones up the mountain? Ming Fan said carefully, uh, Shizun, have you forgotten? At the Immortal Alliance Conference, you bet five thousand. Shen Qingchu remembered. It was the bet he placed on Luo Binghe. Yu Qingyuan had said any loss would be on him while well, any earnings could be kept for himself. Sure enough, Luo Binghe had tried his hardest, and in the final hour, he'd shot past the first and second ranked Gongji Zhao and Liu Mingyan to perch himself at the head of the rankings, earning him double his initial investment. At the top, at the time, he'd thought that a dollar earned was a dollar earned, might as well get something as consolation. Now he was at a bit of a loss. In the past, he'd always given these things to Luo Binghe to handle. Whether it should be sorted for storage or used for something else, how to use it, he never had to worry about them himself. But now Ming Fan was asking him what to do with it. Shen Qingchu thought for a while, then said, Put it away for now. Ming Fan actually wanted to ask for more details, like, where should I put it? But Shizun's face really did not look good, so he was afraid to keep asking. He thought, it should be fine if I put it where Luo Binghe used to put things, and immediately withdrew. For many days, Ching Jing Peak's disciples walked on eggshells, doing their best to avoid the landmines, afraid of touching their Shizun's sore spot. 
They all thought that after a few days, things would eventually take a turn for the better. But after half a month had passed, and Shen Qingchu seemed to be gradually returning to normal, one day, right before mealtime, they suddenly heard Shen Qingchu call Luo Binghei's name a few times from Bamboo House. With a thud, 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 Ning Ying Ying burst inside, giving Shen Qingchu a scare. What are you doing, charging in here so suddenly? It's unsightly for a lady to act so rough and undisciplined. Ning Ying Ying's eyes were red, like that of a little bunny's. She said, Shizun you, whatever you want to eat, I'll make it for you. Shen Qingchu coughed, then said, No need, go out and play. Ning Ying Ying stamped her foot and said, Shizun, even if Aluo is gone, you, you still have the rest of us disciples. You're so beside yourself. Us disciples are worried to death. Shen Qingchu would never have expected someone to use the words beside yourself to describe him. Actually, now that he'd reached the core formation stage, it didn't matter whether he ate or not. He'd just suddenly gotten a craving and wanted to eat some snacks and happened to have forgotten. He'd already kicked Luo Binghei into the endless abyss. How did this count as being beside himself? Shen Qingchu opened his mouth, a hundred words of protest ready to spill forth. But seeing that Ning Yingying was nearly about to cry from anxiousness, he hurriedly switched to comforting her instead. Only after he swore solemnly that just now was a slip of the tongue did she calm down. After coaxing her back outside, Shen Qingchu let out a long sigh, and suddenly felt his little miss, who in the original novel had always been pampered and childish, only capable of getting in trouble and being a burden, had actually grown up quite a bit. Remember, she was Luo Binghei's harem member. She was the one who was supposed to be clawing at the ground, wailing to the heavens, but she'd actually known to come comfort her master. Did his education actually have some effect? Either way, things couldn't go on like this any longer. Clearly, he was the one who'd raised the little sheep of a protagonist. Why did it now look like the protagonist had been the one raising him? Who was he scaring, putting on the act of a grieving widow, when it had only been a couple of days since he'd seen him? Sorry, I have a, a lunch order for the family coming, so I have my text messages on. It's on the way. No. Pa! Shen Qingchu mentally slapped himself. Who are you calling a grieving widow? Whose husband died? That's not something you should just blather out. You're really getting worse day by day. A negative mind produces nothing good. A slap is deserved. But perhaps because Luo Binghei had left, he really was a bit lonely. Especially when he thought that five years later, when they reunited, what had once been a compassionate teacher and filial disciple would become concealed bloodlust and daggers hidden within smiles. Shen Qingchu had brought the broken pieces of Zheng Yang back with him. He messily dug a hole behind Xing Jing Peak's bamboo house, erected a tablet, and set up a sword mound. When others saw him lost in thought facing that empty tablet, they thought he was reminiscing about a beloved disciple, and could only sigh, what a deep master and disciple bond. Fate toys with us all. Only he knew that the one he was lamenting was within the sword mound, buried underneath and incapable of returning, the youth as warm as the sun. Oh my goodness, Delvin! Thank you so much! That's so kind of you! Oh, that is amazing! Thank you so much for all of your support and, and your gifts. That is so kind of you. You really don't have to, and it means a lot that you go out of your way to try and help the channel out. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Delvin. Oh, it makes me so happy. Thank you so much. Mm. Oh. What truly broke him and caused him to weep at the heavens was that after several days of silence, the system gave him a message truly devoid of all humanity. Congratulations! You've successfully completed the key quest. The legend begins. Luo Binghei's fall and rebirth. Reward. Protagonist satisfaction points plus 10,000. Before Shen Qingchu even had the chance to be happy, it continued. But also, due to extraordinary circumstances, a new point value has been activated. Luo Binghei's heartbreak points. Due to excessively high heartbreak level, protagonist satisfaction points have been reset to zero. Please continue to advance your efforts. Reset to zero. Reset to zero. Reset to zero. Those three large words looped endlessly within Shen Qingchu's mind. 
What the hell are heartbreak points? Didn't I tell you not to randomly activate strange point values? Get out. Luo Binghei really is your darling son. Even his heartbreak gets a point value of its own. Years of slaving over every command, and he was back to square one in a single night. Being a villain was truly miserable, with enough grievances to fill the Pacific Ocean. Since he was unhappy, naturally he had to go take it out on someone else. So Shen Qingchu had Ming Fan deliver a message inviting Shang Qinghua to the bamboo house. <sighs> oh, all right. Thank you so much, Delvin. This is very sweet. Uh, we are going to finally have a little bit of a uh, a relaxation, a uh, little bit of a fun scene here. Finally meeting one of my favorite characters for real. <sighs> Shang Qinghua put down the porcelain tea bowl and smiled. Shen Shishong's Qingjing Peak is truly elegant and secluded. Even something as small as a tea bowl is so exquisite, such sophistication truly makes Qinghua feel ashamed. Qingjing Peak and Anding Peak had always minded their own business. Shen Qingchu was reserved and aloof, and very rarely took the initiative to invite guests. Aw, thank you, Daniel. That's very sweet of you. This time, he'd actually sent a disciple to Anding Peak with an invitation. Shang Qinghua was unable to figure out what he wanted. No one slaps smiling faces, so he started out with compliments. It couldn't be a misstep. Shen Qingchu dismissed the disciples, closed the door, and sighed. Shidi, with these words of yours, everything I see has begun to bring up old memories again. Every plank, every dish in this Qingjing bamboo house was personally arranged by that disciple of mine. Shane Qinghua sighed along with him. Ah, Luo Shizi was a heroic youth. Such a pity. Those demons brought such disaster upon us. They are truly hateful. The whole world mourns with us. Shen Shishong, my condolences. Shen Qingchu said faintly, If Shang Shidi truly felt it was a pity, this tragedy would not have occurred. Hearing this, Shang Qinghua stiffened. After a moment, he seamlessly slid his smile back onto his face. What does Shen Shishong mean by this? Is he rebuking our Anding Peak for inadequate administration? If so, Shidi truly should apologize. Shen Qingchu refilled, refilled his teacup and continued. How was it inadequate? You clearly overexerted yourself. You even found demonic creatures like the ghost head spiders, new Yan Chan, and bone eagles that never enter the human realm of their own volition. How could Shi Shang rebuke you for your inadequate administration? Shang Qinghua shot to his feet, his face rapidly changing colors. Peak Lord Shen, don't make such outrageous accusations. Shen Qingchu put his hand on Shen Qinghua's shoulder and said solemnly, Why is Shang Shidi getting so excited? Let's sit down and talk. Let me call you something. Do you agree? With a sneer, Shang Qinghua brushed away his hand and said, Why wouldn't I? I have a clear conscience. Why would I fear a false accusation? Shen Qingchu said, Airplane shooting towards the sky? In that instant, it was like a bolt of lightning from the heavens had struck Shang Qinghua in the head, rendering him unable to speak. After a long time, he managed to stammer out, you, you, how do you know this idea of mine? Seeing his reaction, it was like Shen Qingchu had also been burnt to a crisp by a bolt of lightning. He'd only wanted to observe Shang Qinghua's reaction to the name to determine if he'd also read Proud Immortal Demon Way. Looking at this, he wasn't just a reader. After three long seconds, Shen Qingchu jumped on him. It's you? After reading your entire fucking novel, how could I not know your ID? If you hadn't let something slip when Mobe Jun appeared, I really would never have known where you emerged from, great master. The moment Shang Qinghua had seen Mobe Jun appear, he'd accidentally let out a WTF. At the time, Shen Qingchu had not heard very clearly, so he'd not paid it any mind, but afterwards he grew more and more suspicious the more he thought about it. As the one who'd masterminded the event, or the logistics of it, he was under the irresistible pressure of the plot. Yet he'd not released the Black Moon Rhino Python that should have starred in numerous scenes. This was suspicious enough, but if you explained it had done something intentionally to hinder the development of the plot, to severe the tragedy of Luho Binghe being thrown into the Endless Abyss, it made sense. The two stared at each other, speechless, competing for the most stunned. 
After a long time, Shen Qingchu said, Digging holes and not filling them, foreshadowing gone to waste, landmines all over the place, the writing style of a grade schooler. If you're going to write a stallion novel, then write a proper stallion novel. Don't fool around writing wump. Sheng Qinghua replied, I'm also a victim here. No matter what, I'm still the author, even if I don't transmigrate into the protagonist. I should at least transmigrate into a system, right? But all of a sudden, I try to plug a cord into my computer and get electrocuted, and the system assigns me a character at random. I ended up cannon fodder. Shen Qingchu sneered. Still better than me. After you're exposed as a spy, Mo Bei Jun kills you outright to silence you. It's a straightforward death. I get carved up by Luo Binghe himself, don't you remember? Shang Qinghua said, You only transmigrated here how many years ago? Right upon rebirth, you were already at the rank of a Grand Master, right? I transmigrated here as an infant! My childhood, where I was destitute and miserable, my years as a disrespected outer disciple, have you gone through more than I have? This competition had no winner, because in the end it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. Shang Qinghua sighed and said, I actually met a reader. Must be fate. Must be fate. One of the four joys of life is meeting an old friend in a foreign place. What was your Zongdian ID? Maybe we were old acquaintances. Shen Qingchu said, Peerless Cucumber. Shang Qinghua thought for a while, then said, There's some impression. Weren't you the especially vicious one in one of those threads that was calling to castrate the villain? It was when you <clears throat> read when the original Shen Qingchu wanted to do, you know, to Ning Ying Ying. Shen Qingchu replied, I refuse to believe you only remember this one thing. Don't bring up the past. He said resolutely, Enough with the blather. I wanted to have a full discussion with you today, because after the Immortal Alliance conference, I suddenly thought of an idea. Perhaps it can solve both of our problems. <laughs> so what's just happened? Shang Qinghua, who was the guy that really, he's a spy for the demons, he helped them to ruin the conference and end up with... Uh, you know, Luo Banghe falling into the abyss. Uh, he apparently accidentally said WTF during the abyss scene, and that clued Shen Qingchu into the fact that he might also be a transmigrator from the real world. And so he confronts him and says, hey, you know, he, he names the author of the book to see if he recognizes it, not realizing it's the actual author. The author of the book has been transmigrated into the story as Shang Qinghua, who is uh, mostly around for hilarity and is one of my favorite characters. He's really fun. And so now Shen Qingchu kind of has a uh, assistant, a friend, who knows what's going on with him and is going to try and help him get, uh, get out of this sticky situation. So that is chapter uh, 28. We are on to chapter 29. Chapter 29 by Lu Forrest. Shen Qinghua froze. For real? Shen Qingchu replied. You think joking about something like this is funny? This method is guaranteed to fix everything. As long as it's kept absolutely secret, we'll avoid all trouble. It depends on you. You do still remember creating a plant that only appears every thousand years. Shang Qinghua was speechless. Your description is way too broad. The number of plants that Bingay's eaten that appear once every thousand years are at least 80, if not 100. So you know too. Shen Qinghua gave a sigh, then spoke four words into his ear. Shang Qinghua listened. And did I say Shen? Their, their names both look so much similar because they have similar starting phrases. And I think I'm going to accidentally call them each other. Oh, man. All these different things. Hello, uh, Cyan. I hope I said that right. What about Heaven's Official Blessing? Heaven's Official Blessing is on Mondays. We read that every Monday. This is on Wednesdays. Uh, the weekend, we do horror books on Sunday. And then Friday, I gotta let members decide what we're gonna read next. I need to put that poll up. Shen Qingchu gave a sigh, then spoke four words into his ear. Shang Qinghua listened, shocked. Then after a moment, gave Shen Qingchu a deeply meaningful glance. What are you looking at? Nothing, Shang Qinghua said. I've already long thought that Cucumber Bro is a faithful reader, just one who doesn't like expressing sentiments normally. To think you were able to dig up an obscure, throwaway setup I only used once, I'm very moved. Shen Qingchu said, Tomorrow leave the mountain with me. We'll go search its place of origin. Shang Qinghua said, Tomorrow? Isn't this a little sudden? He stammered. 
truthfully, uh, I can't remember its exact location and description. The entire work was 20 million words long, and it was only mentioned once in a section about nature. Let me think for a while. I'll tell you when I remember. With utmost sincerity, Shen Qingchu said, Then take your time remembering until Luo Binghei murders his way back with Mo Bei Jun under his command. At that time, one will kill me, and the other will kill you. It won't be too late then, either. Shen Qinghua replied, All right, I'll definitely remember by tomorrow. After all, on Anding Peak, trivial matters like assigning rooms and uniforms to newly accepted disciples didn't absolutely require the Peak Lord to do them. Shang Qinghua went back and thought long and hard the entire night, racking his brains, shifting and overturning the contents of his mind. Finally, before daybreak, an epiphany struck, and he circled a location on the map. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Lunch has just arrived at the front door. I am going to go grab that, and then we will continue. Be right back. All right, we're back. Let me grab my water. Hey, Akatsuki. Let's see. Upon seeing the map, Shen Qingchu slapped the table, then grabbed him and set off down the mountain. They spent part of the journey eating, part of it playing, traveled partly by sword and partly by carriage. Originally, it should have been quite pleasant. The only part that was a tiny bit unpleasant was how Shang Qinghua sat in the coachman's seat, moaning and groaning non-stop. He asked, Why am I the one paying for all the food and lodgings? Why, when we're taking a carriage, why am I the one driving? Inside the carriage, Shen Qingchu said, Don't you feel any shame? The funds are public funds, provided by Zhang Men Shishong. All you're doing is taking them from the waste pouch. Thinking about the words Yu Qinghuan had urged him with upon leaving, Shang Qinghua's heart felt extremely sour. What was Shang Shidi? For the journey's duration, Cheng Chu will be in your care. He's poisoned, so please watch over him. As the author, great master airplane shooting towards the sky, who'd put all his, <laughs> who'd put his all into portraying Shang Qinghua as scum, he finally understood this character's suffering. Logistics really had no prospects. Everyone treated him like a nanny. What wasn't understandable about the original Shang Qinghua's desire to climb up by any means. It was all too understandable. Shang Qinghua said, You have hands and feet. Why don't you yourself... Ah, oh, fuck! Shang Qingchu felt the carriage suddenly pitch forward, like Shang Qinghua had abruptly reined the horse in. He raised the curtains, alert, and said, What's wrong? The carriage was per per currently passing through a stretch of dense forest. All around them, ancient trees soared into the sky, while falling leaves were scattered everywhere, the sunlight completely blocked by layers upon layers of branches. On the ground, even sunspots were difficult to find. Seeing that there was nothing strange, Shen Qingchu relaxed his guard and said, What were you screaming for? 
Shang Shenghua was still panicked. Just now, I saw a woman on the ground, slithering by like a snake! Lordy. <sighs> uh, da, 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 where was I? Um, If I didn't stop the carriage, I would have run her right over! Hearing this, it did seem rather eerie. Shen Xingqiu said, eh, It's indeed worth screaming over. The forest was still and quiet. As of right now, nothing seemed off. Shen Xingqiu didn't dare lower his guard. Instead of sitting back inside the carriage, he sat with Shang Xinghua in the driver's seat, forming a sword seal with one hand and observing in silence, while his other hand pulled out a handful of melon seeds from the snacks bag and shoved it at Shang Xinghua. Be good, go inside, eat and play. Shang Xinghua could be ordered about and used for odd jobs, but when it came to fighting monsters, he was pretty useless. He himself knew his own capabilities and obediently took the melon seeds and started eating. With every step the horse took, he ate a seed. Therefore, after an incense of time, they finally realized a very serious, a very serious problem. The two of them wordlessly looked at the ground, at a familiar trail of melon seed hulls. Shang Shenghua said, Hmm, no doubt about it. Kangshong Mountain Sex, Chan Kao Peaks, Dragon Bone Cantaloupe Seeds are red in color with golden insides. These are definitely the trail of seeds I left. Shen Qingqiu replied, I know peddling melon seeds is one of your peak side jobs, enough. So this was their problem. How had they returned to their original location? The two of them stared at each other. They were going around in circles, a very tired and classic scenario. Shang Qinghua thought of an old folk method. How about we try sprinkling a male virgin's urine into the horse's eyes? Shen Qingqiu said, Horses have their dignity, too. Why sprinkle excrement in its eyes? And where am I supposed to find a male virgin's urine within this mountain wilderness? Once the words left his mouth, he realized that Shang Qinghua was gazing intently at him. Shen Qingqiu replied, Why are you looking at me? As for my actual self, let's not talk about that for now. You wrote Shen Qingqiu's original character yourself. He's unsullied without, degenerate within, always burning with lust. He had an affair in his youth and sought prostitutes as an adult. You think I'm still a virgin? Don't point at yourself. Shen Qinghua's character was about the same. Shen Qingqiu frowned and thought carefully, then suddenly slapped his thigh. He turned and entered the carriage, but then abruptly heard Shen Qinghua howl again from outside. Shen Qingqiu grabbed the thing he was looking for and scurried out, yelling, What is it? Shen Qinghua was so terrified, his words no longer had any punctuation marks. When you went in, I felt something hairy brush my neck, and when I raised my head, I saw it was a mass of hair, and underneath it was a huge white face I couldn't see clearly. Fuck me! Shen Qinghua lifted his head. Shen Qingqiu lifted his head and, of course, couldn't see anything. He sat down properly and opened the map within his hands, raised an eyebrow, and said, No matter what it is, it's quite clever. Why? It knows to pick on the weak and chose the easier one to scare. He patted his shoulder again. No matter how terrifying the creature, you wrote it yourself. Why are you scared? Shang Qinghua said, I don't remember writing. Cucumber bro, you're looking at the map. Take a good look. This is a map of the mainland. The entire mainland is on it. Bai Lu Forest may be marked, but it's only the size of a dot. Shen Qingqiu pointed at the lower portion of the map. Look at the place yourself. Kang Chong Mountain. Zahua Temple were in the east, Tianyi Monastery was in the center, and in the south was Huan Hua Palace's territory. Bai Lu Forest's mark just happened to be on the border, outlined with diluted ink. Sheng Qinghua suddenly understood. Huan Hua Palace allotted the forest into its sphere of influence. So right now, we aren't walking in circles, we've entered the palace's protective array. To prevent randoms from stirring up trouble, all the large sects had set up their own spells. Take, for example, Kang Chong Mountain's Heaven Ascending Stairs. Common people who didn't know the path would be stuck climbing 13,000 steps until they were near death, unable to even reach the peak, and could only wait for the disciples defending the mountains to take them down. Trapped without anyone's guidance, they could only keep circling in place. Shen Qingqiu knocked. System, you there. After a while, with no response, he knocked again. Didn't you promise 24-hour online service? If you don't come out, I'll leave a negative review. The system replied, Hello, the system has entered hibernation mode. Currently, there is an AI substitute. If you require service, please help yourself. Hibernation? Shen Qingqiu split his sides laughing. Now that it was mentioned, the past few days, the system hadn't calculated him any B points or various other bizarre newly activated point values. 
The AI substitute spoke up. The system was disconnected from its central power source, Luo Binghe, and is currently undergoing maintenance and updates in the background. The system will activate once it's reconnected. We wish you a pleasant experience using the self-service. Thank you. Your current version's already frustrating enough. Your new version will just straight up kill me in the future. <sighs> no way. The main point is Luo Binghe was your central power source? The fuck? Shen Xingchu still wanted to keep asking questions, but realized the substitute was repeatedly giving the same two lines. What fucking AI substitute? Isn't this basically like an automated response, and you still have the nerve to write AI in front of it? Shen Qingchu patted Shang Qinghua. Knock on your system. Check if it's still connected. Shang Qinghua blinked and after a moment said, It says it's undergoing maintenance! So not only was Luo Binghe a single system central power source, once he was disconnected, all the systems went down. One could say the matter was serious, but in truth it wasn't that serious. It only meant that while Luo Binghe was in the abyss, he couldn't acquire points. After thinking about it, this was good too. If he couldn't acquire them, he couldn't lose them, which meant that all restrictions were off. Shen Qingchu was just consoling himself when he suddenly sensed the shrubbery by the side rustling and moving. He yelled, come out! At his waist, Xu Ya left its sheath, controlled by the orders from Shen Qingchu's sword seals, flipping, stabbing, and slashing. And the creature, hidden in the shrubbery, seemed to swim like fish, more slippery than a loach, evading all the stabs. Suddenly, a blinding ray of light flashed before Shen Qingchu's eyes. Excuse me? The creature gave a shrill whine, then leapt backwards several tens of feet. The shrubbery had already been slashed into shambles, no longer capable of hiding anything, and the thing had long escaped. There were no further movements. Had he used a big technique just now? Seemed like he'd just momentarily reflected a ray of sunlight. Shang Qinghua brought his head in close. It's afraid of light! Hmm, it really is a female ghost. I didn't write about one. I absolutely didn't write about one. The two of them were just about to discuss when there suddenly came the subtle sound of footsteps. The person's movements were excellent. If they were of shallow cultivation, they definitely wouldn't have noticed someone approaching. From the depths of the woods emerged a youth dressed in white. That youth originally had his sword unsheathed, his face on alert. But after seeing the visitors, his expression became astonished, and he quickly sheathed his sword and greeted them. This junior sent some unusual fluctuations around the barrier and hereby hurried over, not knowing a mortal Shen and Shang were here. Please excuse us for not coming over to receive you. Shen Qingchu saw he was quite handsome, but looked unfamiliar, and politely said, This young hero is... That youth almost fell over. Shang Qinghua whispered into his ear, There's a limit to how little face you can leave others. That's Gong Yi Zhao. Gong Yi Zhao felt a little depressed. Though Luo Binghe had kicked him off the Golden Tablet's number one position, he was still number two. He possessed remarkable achievements, was once the favorite for first place, had greeted each sex high-ranking members along with the old palace master. So Shen Qingchu not recognizing him was not within his expectations. As Shen Qingchu praised him, he said, uh, As expected, heroes emerge young. Oh, I don't dare, Gong Gi Shao said. For two peak lords to enter Huan Hua Palace's boundaries, why didn't you inform us beforehand? We've neglected our seniors. Our hearts are burdened. This was truly treating Bai Lu Forest as if it was their sex territory. As a favored disciple on their payroll, he absolutely had to ponder what intentions two peak lords from Kang Shang Mountain had come with to skulk around their sphere of influence's border. Shen Qingchu said, We have no intention of visiting Huan Hua Palace. We're only dealing with a small matter within Bai Lu Forest. Shen Qingchu was already informing him he came for business, yet didn't say what for, clearly demonstrating he wasn't willing to discuss it. In general, Gong Yi Xiao also couldn't ask questions at will. After all, a junior interrogating his seniors about their purpose for being here was far too improper. After wavering for a moment, Gong Yi Xiao said, Though I don't know what matter the two seniors are dealing with, this junior is unskilled. May I be bold enough to request to come along for assistance? Shen Qingchu's face held a smile, his lips barely moving, as he muttered to his teammate, If we refuse him now and let him leave, it won't be just one person coming to look for us later. It's better if we bring him along, and he can fight. Shang Qinghua, who couldn't fight, also muttered, In the event he won't let us walk away with the sun, moon, dew, mushroom, what will we do? If it grows in my garden, of course it belongs to me. If it grows along my fence, it also belongs to me. 
But don't say that I didn't tell you about Huan Hua's palace's logic. Shen Qingqiu replied, are you an idiot? At that time, we just take it and leave. He can't forcibly snatch it from us. If he goes back and tattles to his teacher, that's something for the future. We'll be long gone by then. Why can't he wait for them to catch us? Sheng Qingwa replied, What if the two sects turn hostile? Your life or diplomatic relations, choose one. Sheng Qinghua didn't hesitate in the slightest. Take him along! Shen Qingqiu raised his head and decisively said to Gong Yi Zhao, Let's go! And so, the hard work of driving was handed to the junior. While maneuvering the reins, he said curiously, Senior Shen, this junior has something I don't quite understand. Shen Qingqiu said, Please, say... Gong Xiao said, With seniors' cultivation, breaking our sex array would have only needed a moment, and you could do it without anyone knowing better. Why did you create such a huge spiritual fluctuation? Shen Qingqiu said, The fluctuation wasn't from breaking a spell, but from fighting a mysterious demonic creature. A demonic creature? Shen Qingqiu said, in truth, it was hard to tell if it was demonic, but it had an evil appearance, unlike normal creatures from the human realm. Gong Yi Zhao said, There are human settlements scattered within a few kilometer radius from Bailu Forest, but we've never heard word of a demonic invasion. Even fierce beasts aren't common. Shen Xingqiu muttered to himself, Then exactly what was that? Loose hair draped all over its face, an oddly flexible skeleton, and a bloated face like that of a starved, drowned corpse. Gong Yi Xiao said, No matter what it is, it's best if it doesn't appear. If it does, the two seniors need not trouble themselves. It's fine to leave it to this junior. The respect within those words wasn't faked. Though his understanding of this senior with the Shu Ya sword was limited, they'd only met once or twice from afar. But during the last conference, Shen Qingqiu's personal disciple had passed him to rank at the top. The person himself had also saved quite a few of Huan Hua Palace's disciples, and therefore there was no lack of respect. Shen Qingqiu saw how proper his bearing was, not lacking in the slightest bit of appropriate humility. Plus, his appearance was of the same type as Luo Binghe's, gentle and emotional, his beauty and how his eyes smiled. It was very difficult not to think of Luo Binghe, the unblackened, lovable disciple, and also very difficult to not form a favorable impression. He misses his baby so much! He misses him so much! Hey, welcome! Thanks for joining us! We are now on Chapter 30, The Snake Man of the Dew Lake. With Gong Yi Xiao's guidance, the three quickly broke through Huan Hua Palace's protective array and pinpointed their location. The original novel had not described the place where the sun, moon, dew mushroom grew in much detail, just a brief mention that it was a stone cave covered by dense greenery. Shang Qinghua had to stake his entire life just to remember this bit of content. After all, this thing wasn't meant for Luo Binghei, but arranged to be used by one of his opponents. It was pre precisely because of this that Shen Qingxu dared to take action. If it was something affecting the main plotline, some mysterious flower or herb meant for Luo Binghei's level-ups, he wouldn't have the guts to try and steal it. Trying to steal resources from the male lead wouldn't have a sweet and forgiving conclusion, and you'd be worse off than before. But since they were both villains, it should be fine if he steals it. Fortunately, though Bailu Forest was large, there was only one stone cave. It saved them quite a bit of trouble. Shen Qingchu snapped his fingers, and a bright yellow flame sprang to life at his fingertips. With a flick, the flame swam off into the depths of the damp, pitch-dark cave, a bright tail leisurely swishing behind it, opening up the path before them. At first, the stone path was still wide enough for three people to walk shoulder to shoulder, but the further they went, the narrower it became, until they had to turn sideways to get through. It twisted this way and that, like the coiled intestines of some giant beast. The lighting was poor. Even Shen Qingxu's ball of flame flickered between bright and dim. He flicked out a few more. The balls of fire chased each other around. Gong Yi Xiao took up the rear. Shang Qinghua had to wait outside the cave. Had wanted to wave outside the cave, but Shen Qingxu had dragged him in. Maybe he was scared or something, because he'd touched Shen Qingxu's arm from time to time, causing his arm to burst with goosebumps. Finally, Shen Qingxu couldn't take it anymore. Because there was still an outsider here, he lowered his voice and said, Can you stop pinching me? There was no reply, but at least the touches stopped. Shen Qingxu continued to grope his way forward, but suddenly Shang Qinghua kicked him in the calf. Shen Qingxu couldn't help letting out a fuck slip from his mouth. Shang Qinghua's voice sounded from far behind. Shen Shishong, what did you say? 
His voice echoed through the twisting corridors, like it had been stretched by the distance. It turned out that unconsciously, Shen Qingchu had been walking faster and faster, while Shang Qinghua had dawdled, meaning Gong Yi Zhao, who was taking up the rear, was also unable to pick up the pace. He'd left the two of them behind quite a bit. If it wasn't Shang Qinghua, who had just been touching his arm? Or in other words, what had just been touching his arm? Shen Qingchu ground to a halt. With a blank expression on his face, he patted his arm, attempting to brush off the goosebumps. A few balls of flame were still suspended in midair, burning faintly. The enemy's in the dark. I'm in the light. With a flip of his left hand, Shen Qingchu silently pulled out a couple of talismans from his sleeve, while his right hand slowly drew Xu Ya. The sword grew increasingly brighter, but the only thing in front and behind was dark stone, giving off a damp, rank odor. He suddenly realized that just now, when something had collided with his calf, it didn't feel like a kick from a foot. It was more like a headbutt. Shen Qingchu jerked his head down and met gazes with a deathly pale, bloated face on the ground. Shen Qingchu threw his talismans at the face with his left hand, and in an instant the narrow stone pathway lit up with bursts of flames and flashes of lightning. He wanted to draw his sword, but didn't realize the space was too narrow. Before he'd even drawn it halfway out of the sheath, his right arm knocked against the wall of the tunnel, the hilt of his sword also hitting the stones with a clang. The thing was soft and boneless, slithering back and forth on the ground like a giant snake, evading so quickly that even at this point-blank range the talismans failed to hit, more agile than his movements. In the short time Shen Qingchu had lost attempting to draw his sword, it had already reversed with a swish and slithered away, heading right in the direction of Shang Qinghua and Gong Yi Xiao. He yelled, Watch out! There's something headed your way! Hearing this, Shang Qinghua immediately turned around and yelled, Young hero, quick, let's switch places! He worked in logistics. How could he stand in the front lines? Gong Yi Xiao tried to do as instructed, but the pathway was already narrow enough to raise one's hackles. There was only enough space for one person to walk with a fist's width of margin left, so he couldn't get around at all. Shang Qinghua heard Shen Qingchu yell again from ahead, On the ground! Look on the ground! It's crawling on the ground! When he turned his head again, he saw a snake man slithering towards them. Shang Qinghua immediately made his decision and collapsed on the ground. Gong Yi Xiao had never seen such an eerie monster either and froze for a moment, but upon seeing Shang Qinghua suddenly collapse, his face twitched and he reacted with a, my apologies, and leapt over him. No matter how unsightly it had been, the logistics and the vanguard finally managed to switch places. Shen Qingchu yelled again, don't draw your sword. Before he could finish the word sword, Gong Yi Zhao had carelessly tried to draw, and of course ended up suffering the same consequences, his hilt hitting the stone wall before the sword was halfway out. Shen Qingchu finally arrived holding his sword and blurted out an <laughs> idiot. Gong Yi Zhao was rather aggrieved. In truth, Shen Qingchu also knew the, the issue was his too fast reflexes, causing him to move before he finished listening. Anyone else would have done the same. But in the past, Shen Qingchu had partnered with Luo Binghei, who could understand exactly what he wanted without needing him to say an extra word and respond perfectly. The contrast was as clear as day. Shen Qingchu couldn't help but miss the benefits and ease afforded by Luo Binghei. The stone corridor twisted back and forth, and it was dark, so it was an extremely adv advantageous environment for that thing to move. Shen Qingchu grabbed another handful of talismans, but it had already long slithered away and disappeared. Gong Yi Xiao said in disbelief, Xin Yu Shen, that snake, was that the demonic creature you encountered in the forest? Shen Qingchu said, it was. I still don't know how this thing managed to escape from our pincer attack. Without a change in expression, Shang Qinghua got up from the ground, patted the dust from his robes, and said, It squeezed past me. Gong Yi Zhao and Shen Qingchu were silent. Ugh, let's go. This time stay close behind me. His reminder wasn't necessary. This time, even on the threat of death, Shang Qinghua refused to stray more than two feet away from him. After a dizzying number of twists and turns, the three finally made their way out of the stone corridor. Deep in the belly of the cave, they suddenly came to a wide clearing. Before, Shen Qingchu had not understood. The depths of this cave could be completely absent of both sunlight and moonlight. How could... excuse me. How could something like the Sun Moon Dew Mushroom, which by name clearly gathered spiritual energy from nature and the sun and the moon, grow in this place? But now, he finally understood. 
As it turned out, at the cave's highest point, a giant opening yawned up toward the sky. Sunlight and moonlight could fall through the opening, and like a spotlight, hit a single point at the heart of the cave's lake. And that area of lake, illuminated by the glittering light, surrounded a tiny mound of soil. Naturally, this treasured location, bursting with feng shui, was where the sun moon dew mushroom grew. Shane Chinghua said with conviction, The Dew Lake, I'm certain! They'd found the right place. Having received confirmation, Shen Chingchu let out a sigh of relief. This was no ordinary lake water, but rather unsullied morning dew. Unsullied water and morning dew, brimming with spiritual energy, nourished the mushroom. After the mushrooms matured, their micella would sink into the water and soil and could nourish the dew water in return. By cycling it back and forth, the spiritual energy wouldn't fade, never to be exhausted. Admiring the beautiful scene, Gong Yi Zhao finally understood the objective of these two Kang Chong Mountain Peak lords. But he still found it a bit odd. Kang Chong Mountain was a major sect which produced mystical herbs and elixirs. The number of rare and treasure flowers they'd gathered every day couldn't be low. This mushroom was scarce and precious, but it didn't look like something that could grant immortality or a breakthrough to ascension. So why did it merit two peak lords personally taking a long journey to collect it? Right now, the only things in Shen Qingchu's eyes were those small, white, fleshy pods in the center of the lake. With a sweep of his sleeves, he stepped resolutely into the water. After a few dozen steps, the dew water passed his waist, neither warm nor cold, soaking his skin. It felt as if it could soak right through to the heart. Though the mushrooms were still small and looked like bean sprouts, once they were planted somewhere with excellent feng shui and a bounty of spiritual energy and nurtured according to plan, Seeing the dozens of small, tender, white dew mushrooms growing on the little dirt mound, Shen Qingchu hesitated. After all, the dew mushrooms growing here were a wonder of nature. To pick them clean seemed a bit immoral. But on second thought, if he didn't pick them all now, another villain would pick them later, which would be even more immoral. And if they messed up and destroyed one, it would be good to have a few extra as backup to be absolutely safe. Insurance was the most important. Having made his decision, he carefully pulled up each together with a little soil and stored them in his sleeves. With the last dew mushroom in his hands, before he could throw it into his sleeves, Shen Qingchu suddenly heard the sound of a sword being drawn behind him. When he turned around, Gong Yi Xiao already had his sword in hand, staring straight at him. At first, Shen Qingchu thought Gong Yi Xiao was protesting his haphazard method of collecting, but when he looked at Shang Qinghua and saw him in the same stance, he knew something had gone wrong. He held his breath. Suddenly, something long and large leapt out of the surface of the lake. It looked like a giant fish pouncing straight towards Shen Qingchu. A pale and deadened face flew right at him. It was the thing that had followed them the entire time. At the same time, Gong Yi Zhao finished forming his sword seal, and his sword flew at the thing like a bolt of lightning. But once it miss missed its pounce, it sank into the lake and did not resurface, stirring up the long-settled sandy dirt at the bottom of the lake, until it was turbid and murky. Gong Yi Zhao called back his sword and said, Senior Shen, come on shore, quickly! But Shen Qingchu smiled and said, Don't panic, I want to go fishing. He stood in place without moving, slowly pulling out a talisman from his lapels. Gong Yi Zhao said, uh, Against this thing, a single talisman's probably not. Before the enough could leave his mouth, he saw Shen Qingchu rub the talisman like he was rubbing a bill, and the single talisman suddenly became an entire stack. Holding the stack of talismans, Shen Qingchu thrust his fist into the water. A chain of booms! The surface of the lake exploded, sending over twelve sprays of water, each more than ten feet high, into the air. The snake man hiding on the lake bottom was also thrown into the air by the explosion, tossed up high before crashing heavily to the ground by Shang Qinghua's feet. Shen Qingchu dripped his way back onto shore. After being given a meaningful look from him, Gong Yi Xiao used the hilt of his sword to turn it over. After it was turned over, all three were horror struck. After a long time, Shen Qingchu turned to look at Shang Qinghua. What is this? Shang Qinghua squeezed out three words. I don't know! He really didn't. The creature was vaguely human-like. It had a long, full head of hair, but seemed entirely composed of cartilage. Its skin was rough and hard and covered in patches of scales here and there, like a python half-scraped of its scales. Though Shen Qingchu had originally thought it was a female ghost, after looking closer at the face, he could faintly see it was a man. Shang Qinghua gave Shen Qingchu a questioning look. Did I write about this kind of thing? Shen Qingchu said, I don't think so. 
If the original novel had given it more than ten words of description, there was no way he wouldn't have remembered. The two looked hopefully at Gong Yi Zhao. Gong Yi Zhao couldn't recognize it either and felt a bit awkward. Even two masters cannot recognize the creature. It is more unfamiliar to this junior. Shang Qinghua suddenly said, Let me say something. Maybe this isn't the creature's natural form. Made sense. Looking at the grotesque form, it did not seem like a normal creature at all, but rather a deformed specimen or crossbreed. Shen Qingchu muttered, Punishment from the heavens, a curse, or a cultivator who failed to cultivate a forbidden technique. Gong Yizhao said, All three of those indeed could create this kind of monster. The snake man on the ground seemed to be irritated by the word monster, and its tail-like thing started furiously slapping the ground. Shang Qinghua hurriedly dodged away. Young hero Gong Yi, young master Gong Yi, don't make irresponsible remarks. It seems like it can understand us. Use a different word, a different word. It kept its gaze fixed on Shen Qingchu's sleeve. Shen Qingchu noticed that though this creature looked sinister and terrifying enough to make one wretch, the eyes gazing through its curtain of tangled hair were incomparably clear, like the water of the Dew Lake. Shen Qingchu had a sudden re realization. No wonder it attacked us. Look, he pointed. Its eyes. They've probably become like that because it drank unsullied morning dew every day. Now look at the scales. There is lichen growing between the cracks, green with a bit of red, the exact same kind that grows on the walls. It's been entering and leaving this cave for a long time. Perhaps it's been living off the dew within the lake. And if the sun-moon dew mushroom was picked, it would be equivalent to destroying the force behind the circulation of energy. The spiritual energy in the dew lake would gradually be depleted, and eventually become a pool of wastewater, even dry up completely. That was why this creature had been following them the whole time, waiting for a chance to attack. Gong Yi Zhao said, But Senior Shen, if the monster has been living off dew water, wouldn't it be better to eat them directly? Why didn't it pick the mushrooms? Shen Qing Chu said, When we were in Bai Lu Forest, it was hampering us the entire time. Once it only retreated after it was burned by sunlight reflecting off the sword. Perhaps it cannot stand light, especially light from the sun and moon. It can only move within the shade of forests, inside caves and beneath water. He pointed at the beam of light shafting down from the cave's domed ceiling. The dew mushrooms are steeped in moonlight and sunlight all day and all night. Of course it could not approach. As confirmation, he pulled out a tender dew mushroom and swung it back and forth. As expected, the snake man's eyes lit up and it urgently craned its neck, showing a mouthful of dense white teeth. Seeing this, Gong Yi Zhao prodded it with the hilt of his sword and flipped it over again. The snake man strained, struggling and wriggling on the ground, but couldn't turn back over. Gong Yi Xiao held his sword point down, seemingly preparing to stab it through. Shen Qing Chu saw this and hurriedly said, Wait! As expected, Gong Yi Xiao stopped and asked in confusion, Senior? Shen Qing Chu said tactfully, You said before, the common people within a several kilometer radius from the forest have never suffered demonic attacks. Yeah. Then that means it's never done anything malicious. There's no need to exterminate it. Speaking of which, all it had done every day was collect the water in the cave. We were the ones who intruded and disturbed it. Seeing his senior had spoken, of course Gong Yi Xiao had to obey. And what he said was true. If this monster really hadn't kill had killed or harmed any humans, Huan Hua Palace would have discovered and eradicated it long ago. It was precisely because it had never done any harm that it hadn't been killed. So he resheathed his sword, seeing that Shen Qingchu was looking at the creature on the ground with a benevolent gaze. Gong Yi Zhao only thought he was the same type as the masters from Zhao Hua Temple, who believed in mercy and charity. He could never have known that Shen Qingchu's interest in these strange creatures was equivalent to a normal Zongdian reader's interest in the hundreds of flower-like maidens all competing in beauty. <laughs> he loves monsters! <laughs> <laughs> Even after they'd all left the depths of the cave, no one had noticed that the snake man strenuously struggling on the ground had already stopped and was instead shivering slightly. Pressed under its deformed body was a small and thin dew mushroom sprout. In that pair of incongruously bright eyes, a raging fire seemed to start burning. After exiting Bailu Forest, Gong Yi Zhao invited the two to visit Huan Hua Palace, as well as notify the old palace master. Shen Qing Chu declined. After all, we've already gained your assistance. It would be impolite to trouble you further. You're joking. Go to Huan Hua Palace? For what? A flower viewing party? What if your higher-ups take things too seriously and dis insist on discussing property lights on the mushroom? 
Seeing that Gong Yi Xiao still wanted to keep them, Shang Qinghua said, Young hero Gong Yi, let's dispense with the courtesies this time. We can still visit next time. If you come to Kang Chong Mountain in the future, you can visit Ching Jing Peak. Senior Shen will definitely look after you well. Shen Ching Chu gave him a look. Shang Qinghua immediately shut up. Shen Ching Chu finally adjusted his expression and said with a smile, As Shang Chi Di says, Ching Jing Peak awaits your arrival. Gong Yi Zhao knew that just like its name, Ching Jing Peak was fond of peace and quiet and did not like to be disturbed by outside guests. He wasn't sure if these were just words of courtesy, but smiled either way. I will remember Senior Shen's words. I may truly have the chance to disturb you in the future. At that time, to whom should I send the message announcing my arrival? Without a second thought, Shen Ching Chu said, Give it to my disciple Luo Bing. After he spoke, everyone fell silent. The atmosphere turned a bit odd. After getting stuck for a moment, Shen Ching Chu slowly flapped his, flapped his fan twice and stiffly continued on. Uh, Shong, uh, Ming Fan. Chong Ji Zhao's heart filled with conflicted feelings. Rumors said that after Ching Jing Peak's peak lord lost his beloved disciple at the conference, he'd fallen into inconsolable heartbreak for a long time, beside himself with grief. Seeing him now, it looked like he still hadn't accepted Luo Binghe was already gone. Perhaps he hadn't gone out to pick the mushroom at all, but just to take his mind off things, so he could briefly forget Luo Binghe's existence. Otherwise, why would two peak lords come in person? Senior Shang must have come to supervise and make sure he didn't do anything stupid. But after forcing a smile onto his face this whole trip, he managed to poke his sore spot and bring up melancholy things. As expected, what a deep master and disciple bond. Until they parted ways, Gong Yi Xiao kept looking back at Shen Ching Chu every few steps, his gaze a complicated mix of awkwardness, sympathy, sorrow, and admiration. Shen Ching Chu was a bit creeped out. It was only a slip of the tongue. What stories were Gong Yi Xiao making up in that head of his? Shang Qinghua sighed. It's true. It's actually true. Shen Ching Chu kicked him, neither light nor heavy. What's true? Shang Qinghua replied. I've been watching you for a while, and I have something to say. It's uncomfortable keeping it in. Cucumber bro, did you really see Luo Binghe as the apple of your eye? Adoring him as your darling baby disciple? He analyzed the evidence piece by piece. I heard your Qingjing disciples say that ever since returning from the conference, Shen Shishong has been beside himself with grief, his mind wandering all over the place. So many times you'd call Luo Binghe's name and stand in front of that sword mount and sigh in sorrow. I didn't believe it, but just now I finally witnessed it with my own eyes. I really never thought you were this sort of person. Oh, fuck. Beside yourself again? Is this phrase going to be the stain on my lifetime's worth of hard work? My Qingjing Peak disciples all walk the path of scholarly detachment. When did they become so gossipy? Spreading this sort of nonsense everywhere. Where are you placing your Shizun's image? Shang Qinghua continued to dig his own grave. Cucumber bro, can I ask, how did you see Luo Binghe? I remember you were one of his fans. Right, you ranted about a huge bunch of the characters I wrote, but you never ranted about him. To you, is he a character, or is he a... A chill ran up Shen Ching Chu's back. This bizarre interrogation from great master airplane shooting towards the sky was basically like high school girls gossiping in the dorms after lights out. Tell me, tell me, do you have a crush on blank? No, what are you talking about? Dodging the question, don't be shy. <laughs> I hate you, go to bed. Lightning from the nine heavens. Shang Qinghua was completely innocent. He was making an honest inquiry and seeking a discussion but it was Shen Qingzhu who had skeletons in his closet and was thinking too much. Shen Qingzhu interrupted him. You're still not moving? Shang Qinghua stared. What? Shen Qingzhu looked at him and then shoved the reins into his hands. Gong Yi Xiao left. We still need a driver. Why haven't you driven once? You should be considerate towards a poisoned invalid. Invalid, my ass. Who was happily fighting monsters and blowing up spiritual lakes just now? Have some face. Shen Qingchu laid back in the carriage and shook out his sleeves. Thinking about the time, there was still five years before Luo Binghe would return from the endless abyss to the human realm. If nothing went wrong, it was enough to save his life. However, he'd forgotten the kind of stupid work proud immortal Demon Wei was. If nothing went wrong at such a crucial junction in a novel's storyline, that meant it wasn't exciting enough. Dun dun dun! 
All right, we're going to stop there. That is the end of chapter 30. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next Wednesday with more Scum Villain. Uh, Heaven Official Blessing is on Monday and uh, other books as well across the week. If you like what I do and you want to support it, please consider becoming a member. You can uh, download MP3s of the readings and take them with you wherever you go. Listen to them on your Zoom, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can get extra content, uh, poetry readings, uh, readings from mythology and folklore, all kinds of stuff. I am adding more and organizing it uh, right now, so hopefully I'll have new stuff to announce soon. Um, excuse me. Uh, I will be back with a video game soon. Uh, probably Outlast. Maybe something else if I don't feel like it. <laughs> but it'll probably be Outlast. Uh, and tomorrow, I believe, we'll be having our next uh, Merry Mythmas, uh, talking about Babylonian myth and its origins, and then playing a game called Moon Hunters, which is a really lovely game inspired by Babylonian myth. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, thanks for listening once again. Thanks to all our members. Thank you so much, Delvin, for your amazing support uh, continuously since you've become a member and all that. You've been amazing. Thank you so much. And to everyone else, Daniel, thank you for your support. Uh, Alice, you're, you're all amazing. Jeff, you're, you're the reason that I can continue to do this, and uh, it's just wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I've created a newsletter for members that will have easier ways of accessing your uh, members' content. If you want to sign up for that, the link's in the Discord. Uh, yeah, so do that if you want to be connected to stuff. <laughs> Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!